Hello guys, welcome back. In the previous um, video, we worked on custom reports, but this time around, I want to work on error log. How what is error log? Um, is this kind of a situation whereby an error occurred in the system, but how do you get to know what error occurred? You keep it in a doc type called error log. Type error log. Here is a doc type called error log where whichever error that occurs in the system will be saved in this doc type. When you click on any of the error, you get a message that says um, the title of the error and the main error log is kind of a Python uh, console traceback will be stored here. Okay, to create an error log, it's advisable that in your app, your code should be embedded in a try block. I'll use my property, use the controller. Your code should be embedded in a try block. Um, for an instance, this after insert should be completely embedded in a works in a try block. I mean, this main code should go in the try. And you have a block outside the accepts section we handle the error uh, issue. But for the now, I will leave my code as it is. They just use a sample to show you how you can work with the error log. Okay, let's say I wrote my code to look for a query frappy.db.sql, then say select name from a tenant. Tenant, we have no tenants in our property database. Tenant, peer, uh, tenant, friends. From tab property. That's all we want. Now, this SQL query will generate an error, but how do we log the error? We log the error by saying um, frappy in our exception block dot error log. Then you say frappy dot get trace back the function then the error log in question and what is the error log the e if you print this e okay first thing we'll do is print this e i'm going to let go this then print the e first print e this e will show you the entire error on the terminal i'll close down this terminal and restart then make a try on our document to see what we get. Okay, I can make small change to this document and try to save. It's saved, but an error occurs. Take note that this uh, has been updated is an event. We already know what an event means. But an error actually occurred, but it did not show up because we have this try and accept block. We have the try and, sorry about that. We have this try and accept block. And how can we view the error? You go to your code and you can see an error printed somewhere. The error should be printed somewhere here. Print E. Okay, I'll have a go at that again. The error should be printed. Go back to my pose. Um, why the code did not execute it? Because we have it in this after insert. After insert deals with creating new document. It should be in the validate block. I will enable this validate block. Then copy this entire code. Drop it under this validate. Then uh, copy this last one as well. Put it under here. Push this up. And okay. Restart our server once more. And try again. Change this document. Click on save. Okay, saved, but there's an issue. It did not just save. The error was printed. We can check our terminal and we'll find an error printed somewhere. 
uh, we have some kind of error. Printed. Well, whether printed or not, I'll transfer this error to the system itself. Save this, restart the server, and go again. Anyway, um, the error actually printed. This is the error that printed. Unknown column tenant in field list. Despite that, we said tenant and friend. It will encounter this first, then complain. If this is corrected, it will encounter this next. So meaning that our code was actually executed properly. It says unknown column in tenant. That worked fine. But how can we log this in the system in this error log list? How can we do that? We did that by saying property.error log, property.get trace back is a function e. You pass this e into the system. You can save that once more. Save. You may get an error. Yeah, the error will say type list, type, type error, list object is not callable. Why we got this list object is not callable is that we should pass this in a kind of string. I'll pass it in a string as does. You can save this, then try again, restart my server, and try it again. Close this, save once more. Okay, I don't think it has fully loads, it has not fully loads. And that's why I'm going to check my code once more. Uh, this should work f of e should work i'll try that once more oh. well if that doesn't work we have to pass it in a bigger quotes one two three one two three okay three complete stop my server start it again Try saving once more. This is pretty funny, but I'm gonna have a look at my code once more. It's kind of funny. Frappy dot error. My God. Frappy dot log error, not error log. Frappy dot log error, not error log. Just made a big error there, yeah. big mistake. Okay, we save this. Um, start this other once more. And try for the last time. Last, last time. Okay, save once more. Wow. Okay, it saved this time around. We can see the code executed. The error wasn't printed because we captured the error and saved it in the error log. We can check the error log for uh, code refresh. And you can see the error log. Do not take uh, mind this time that says nine hours. I haven't restarted my VPS in about 24 hours. Then hibernating it, it changes the time. But this is the new error in the error log. You can click on it to open. Then you see 105 unknown column tenant. You can see it's a tenant from this star property. Then back to it. This is the entire traceback. Says in estate app, this is this property line 18. Invalidate. We have in line 18 in this validate function, you have it. Then says the main error is pi my sql internal error 105 on no column tenant so this is just practically how you can log an error in the system it will really help to show the users that an error occurred how about telling the user that an error occurred in the system and they can check it up to do that i'll use my popular frappy.message prints 
I so much love it. I would say an error occurred. Once this, you attach it immediately after the frappy.log error, an error occurred. Then you can see, see, and we use a link a h r e f. I make okay. I will make it good later. Is equal to. I would say. Use double here outside. Use double to end it. Yes. This will be assign this to a variable error is assign this then here will be the your link slash how do we get the error your link slash this um okay. have this I have slash deck slash form slash error log. You can give a space and slash the name of the error. Error dot name. And what next you can end then use a bold B back again error dot name. Then close your boots slash B. Then close your anchor slash A. Okay, we have an error occurred. P. You see this error? Then the name. Save. Go back. Restart. While the server restarts, we can read the code once more. The frappe dot message prints says an error occurred. This will show the user that an error has occurred in the system after saving the error in the system. And how about, okay, there's no need for that. I'll just go, go back to this error log to watch. It shows the state of scene. Go back to my document, make small change and try to save it once more. It did not say because since the server is still restarting. Try that again. Okay, said an error occurred. See this. Okay. And the page has opened rightly direct to the error itself. We have it unknown colon tenant, and here we have it. You can go back to the error log, you see it as the next one already seen above. Okay, that's just it for how to view error log, and I hope you learned, really learned a lot here. And you can also try to do more things, but how to really get this properly is to embed your entire code in a try except block. Your main code should be here. Then after your main code, at after this except, you have this error catcher. Then you can drop a message if you feel like showing the user that an error has occurred in the system. And that just is for now. Thanks for watching and please do like, subscribe, and share to your friends.